Recording vocals has always been a really intimidating process for me because I'm not a naturally great singer. I've had to work very hard just to sing as good as I can. And the recording process used to take forever just to get something that, that I was okay with. But I recently released a new track. I did a cover of the song Into the Unknown from Frozen 2. And personally, I think it's my best vocal performance to date. I practiced and worked very hard on the vocals, but at the same time, the actual recording process went by so much easier. And I'm pretty pleased with the performance I was able to get out of that. And so what I'd like to do is share with you some tips that I learned from that that really helped me and can help you improve your vocal performances. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing, and hopefully this is kind of obvious, but you need to practice. And I just mean in general, you need to be practicing regularly. Think of it like a fighter. As a fighter, you don't wait till you have a fight coming up to start training. No, you train all the time, you stay ready. You stay in shape, you're always training, and then when a fight comes up, then you might tweak your training to be more specific to what might be required for that particular fight. So it's the same thing with vocals, you don't wait until you've got a project coming up and you're going to record vocals, you need to be practicing regularly. Now thankfully, there's a lot of great free content on YouTube. A couple channels I would recommend, Mary Zimmer at Voice Hacks. Her videos have really helped me out, especially if you're into, you know, rock and metal singing and you're wanting to learn like aggressive vocals, like screaming, that kind of stuff. Um, she's a great place to go for that. And then another channel that's been really helpful is uh, Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy. I've actually taken some of these videos and I've made a playlist and included a link in the description so you can check that out. And there's a lot of tutorials in that playlist that have really helped me out. I've got another link in there for a vocal workout. It's a video with a whole workout routine and you could do that every day. This can get you started, but you certainly want to try to look up exercises that are specific to your needs, your problems, the things you're trying to learn as a vocalist. But that'd be my tip is just to start with the free stuff and find a certain time during the day where you can start practicing and make it part of the routine so that you're practicing at least Monday through Friday or something like that, you know, just as frequently as you can do. Now, I think you can get pretty far with the free lessons, but if you can afford actual vocal lessons, a, a private lesson can be super helpful. It's really nice having a vocal expert give you specific exercises to address your needs as a vocalist. I actually paid for a private lesson with uh, Mary Zimmer from Voice Hacks. I did the lesson and it was good. She, she really helped me out. I, was, I had trouble with my low range. And in general, just certain notes just felt kind of unstable. And I was using tension to stabilize my voice rather than letting the air support do the work. So she gave me some exercises to help me better utilize my air support and kind of relieve some of that tension. And not only did it make my low range stronger, but it helped me hit those higher notes with more ease as well. When I first had the lesson, I mean, you're not going to notice changes right away. You know, you kind of do it and you're like, all right, well, that was something. <laughs> but if you actually put in the practice and you do it regularly, then you'll get stronger as a vocalist and that's when you'll start noticing changes. I just had one lesson with her and it was really helpful. So if you can afford lessons, um, even just one lesson from a vocal expert like her, I think it can be really helpful. So I'm going to include a link with contact information in case you're interested in having a private lesson with her. Um, she's the only one that I've had personal experience with, so uh, that's the only one I can really recommend, but of course, uh, you can certainly look into other vocal teachers as well. Okay, so that's advice that you should just be applying in general. You know, that's something that you should always be doing. But what about when you're actually planning to record for a song? Um, how do you best prepare for that? So the first thing you want to do, and you want to do this very early on, like kind of in the pre-production phase, is you want to record some demo vocals. Now, what's nice about demo vocals is it's not nearly as intimidating as the actual performance. This, you just get to go in there and you just get to play around and experiment with your voice, and you're just trying to figure out what works best for the song. I do my own recording, so I have a project here here that I set up. Basically, I just come in here, I've got my backing track right here, and this is just the demo version. This isn't even the final version of the song. I've got a piano melody. This is super helpful, just kind of singing along with, helping you keep pitch. And then I just did like two or three takes, just kind of singing around and just kind of experimenting with different ways to sing the lines. And then what I did here was I kind of analyzed my performance and divided it into different sections based on how good or bad I thought it was. So I have one track called Good, I've got one called OK, I've got one called Tweak, and I've got one called Weak. So what that means is good means it was good. You know, if you listen back to a section and you're like, hey, that actually sounds pretty good, then you kind of cut that out and you add that in the good section. Now, if you hear a section that is passable, it's not amazing, but it sounds fine, then that would go in the okay section. So this is like the safe section. There's nothing like stand out about it, but if you combine it with the good parts, then it'll blend in just fine. After that, we have the 
tweak section. This is where you're singing something and it's just kind of boring. It might not necessarily be bad, but there's nothing stand out about it and it's kind of bringing everything else down. That's the section where you want to try to find a different way or a better way to sing that particular section. And then the weak section, these are the problem areas. This is the stuff that does sound bad and it's like, man, I gotta fix that. I gotta find a better way to sing that. So this can be really helpful. Cause first off, the weak and the tweak sections, they have big influence over the whole performance. You know, you can listen to it as a whole and think like, man, this really isn't that good. But if you just cut out all the bad parts and listen to the good parts, you might realize, hey, there's actually some good sounding stuff in here. It's just a few parts that I need to fix. And once you fix those weaknesses, it elevates the whole performance and you come out with something a lot better. Now, if you don't typically record your own vocals, if that's usually something that's handled by someone else, well, what you could do is you could still learn how to record your own vocals and you could get yourself some free recording software. So if you've got an Apple computer or an iPhone, you can get GarageBand for free and it'd be a good skill for you to learn just how to record your own vocals and how to edit, analyze your own voice and kind of work with your own voice so that when you do go into the studio, you're ready to go. Now, if you don't have those resources or you're just having trouble understanding how that works, the simplest thing you could do, you could just record your performance on your phone and listen back to it and then just write down the lines that sound weak. Just try to write down all the weak areas and then continue to record yourself singing those specific spots and trying to find a better way to do it. Now, as you're experimenting, one thing you want to remember to do is don't just sing the song, but you need to perform the song. So don't forget to put some emotion into it. it sometimes it can get so easy to just focus on the technical stuff, just like singing it technically correct, but that's not always the most interesting thing to listen to. So really listen to the dynamic of the song. If there's like a soft section, almost sing it like a whisper. If you're expressing some kind of um, vulnerability or kind of exhausted, try to sound exhausted while you're singing, try to sound vulnerable. And then as the song builds up, you might start to add more power behind it and more like determination or confidence or frustration or whatever it might be. If you need to sound angry, a simple thing you can do is just gritting your teeth. You know, sing it, but kind of grit your teeth while you do it. And that just adds an interesting texture. And uh, listen to artists that you like, singers that you like, and, and pay attention to these things that they do to kind of make their vocals more interesting and give more character to their performance rather than just singing. Because you could sing it correctly, but if it's boring, then it's, it's not gonna match with the music and no one's really gonna enjoy it. You can actually kind of get by without being like the greatest singer if you can add a lot of character to your voice. So don't forget to kind of add that in there. Another thing that can be really helpful while you're recording demo vocals is to get some feedback from a friend. So when I was working on Into the Unknown, I had done kind of some rough vocals and I wasn't even really performing. It was kind of just to hear the vocals with the music. And I went to show my friend and he thought it was cool, but he commented he felt like my vocals didn't really match the performance. But that was really helpful advice and it kind of helped me realize, okay, I'm gonna have to sing a bit more aggressively if I really want my vocals to match the tone of the music. Showing someone else can kind of give you some direction on the best way to approach singing a certain song. So now that you have an idea how to sing the song, what you're gonna do is you kind of stitch all that together and you kind of create this Frankenstein version of your vocal performance because ideally you don't want much editing in there. You want to sing as much of it as you can in one take. Um, but this take is just going to be all chopped up of just all the good parts kind of stitched together. And what you want to do is you want to listen to that. And so the next step is once again, practice. Only this time, instead of general practice, now we're going to practice specifically. So you want to listen to your reference track, that demo that you made, and you really want to take that to memory and kind of just remember how to sing the song and learn to sing it that way. So obviously you want to prioritize the weak spots of the songs, the areas where you were really struggling and maybe you didn't even get a good performance for the demo. It's like, okay, I really got to fix that. So that's the stuff you really want to focus on working on and you want to find exercises to help with that. So for example, for my performance, what I was working on whenever I would start practicing, you know, first warm up your voice. And then I would always work on air support because that was the main thing. And then I was really focusing on exercises to help with my low range. I was really trying to sing with more power and stability while hitting those lower notes. And then I was also kind of working on my grit technique because I knew I was going to sing with a lot of vocal distortion during this performance. I really focused on those, those weak spots. I worked on the techniques that I was planning to use. And then I would always record myself singing the actual song. So yes, I was doing exercises, but then I would always practice the actual song. Now, when I first practiced the song, I actually just focused on singing it technically correct. Like I didn't worry about adding emotion. I didn't worry about really performing. I was just focusing on having my pitch really locked in, you know, coming in on the right timing, kind of learning the coordination of when to breathe and really just working on like hitting the notes as 
properly as I could. So just singing clean. It's kind of boring, but you're just focusing on technique and being able to sing with good power and stability. And I would say to practice like that for at least a couple weeks, and then you want to start practicing on your performance. So you do the same thing, but now you start adding some emotion in there. You start adding some character. You add a little bit of grit, add a little bit of texture to your voice, whatever it's going to be, really try to get in the zone. And as you're doing this, every time you're singing the song, you just record yourself into your phone and then listen back to it and kind of make an assessment of what was good and what was not good. So usually what I did, I would keep the first recording and then I would delete the other recordings. I'd listen to them, but eventually I'd delete them. And then once I started actually performing, I'd keep that first recording and compare it to the other first recording just to make sure that I am getting better. Anytime there was a, like a good performance, I'd, I'd keep it and I'd listen back to it just so I could kind of take note like, oh, I really like the way I sang that. But yeah, make sure you practice the actual song and practice it frequently. So now you're ready to actually record the song. And for me, it used to be that I had to wait for the stars to align and for it to be like the perfect day for me to record vocals. But the reality is if you're waiting for the perfect day, it's like it just, it's not going to happen and it's going to take you forever to get the song done. But if you're constantly practicing and if you've practiced this song specifically, then even on days where maybe you're not feeling your best, you're probably still gonna give a solid performance. And you're definitely gonna have more good days than bad days if you're practicing frequently. So when it comes to the actual recording day, uh, make sure you're well rested, you wanna get a good night's rest. And uh, one little tip, you might wanna avoid dairy for that day. That's tough for me because I love milk, I love yogurt and stuff, but uh, I try not to consume any of that before my vocal performance. And then you wanna warm up. Now don't overdo your warm up, uh, just do enough just to kinda get loosened up and get ready. And that can also be a good way to feel out like if you're going to be able to sing well that day or not. I mean, if you try to warm up and it's just going really rough, then yeah, maybe you, you might wait another day. Now, if you're recording vocals yourself, um, it really helps to have a simple setup. Like, make sure you kind of know how to record the vocals and make sure you get everything set up so that all you have to do is hit record and just focus on singing. You want to make it as easy on yourself as possible and as enjoyable because it can be a pretty intense uh, session when you're recording vocals by yourself. And now, if you have someone else doing it, then it's a little bit easier to just kind of focus on your part and let them handle all the technical stuff. Now, if you're recording a song with multiple layers, just focus on the main vocals first. Don't think, oh, well, this stuff's going to be easier to sing. It's like, no, no, no. Focus on getting the main vocals first, get a good performance of that, and then you can figure out all the, uh, the backup layers. And once again, when you're recording, I think it's helpful to sing along with that piano track. If you've got like a piano melody playing along with the vocal, um, that can sort of help you really nail your pitch so that you don't have to worry about using a lot of auto-tune later on in the, the uh, editing process. All right, so the best way to actually record vocals is to just do three long takes of the whole song. So the first one is kind of a warm-up for you. When you just start singing, you hit record, you're not gonna be like in the zone right away. It's gonna take you a little bit. But that first take should be enough to kind of get you in the mood. First verse is gonna be rough, but once you get past the chorus, second verse, you should start like feeling it more, really getting into the song. And by the end of it, you should feel like, all right, I'm kind of pumped up, I'm ready to go. So you, you stop the recording and you just start a new one. So take two is usually a good one. So now you've got more energy, you're like into the song and just enjoy it, you know? If you mess up, don't, oh, I messed up, don't stop the recording, just keep going because you're gonna do another take. And after three takes, you can kind of give your voice a rest and sort of look back at your performances. And now what you wanna do is you wanna try to find the best parts. So you just kind of go through and, and you kind of listen and say, okay, this sounded good and kind of, kind of stitch them together. So kind of like what we did before, only hopefully this time, instead of having to cut them up into little bits, like you've got these nice long sections and it's like, all right, that verse sounded really good or this, this line here sounded really good, you know? So you're picking all the best parts and you're putting them together. Once you've got something like, okay, cool, this is all pretty solid stuff, that's when you can kind of go in and punch in. So you start singing specific sections. So maybe there was kind of a weird line in the verse or something. It's like, oh, I can sing that better. So you might redo the verse. Maybe you just want to make sure that you really nail the course. So you, you do a few takes focusing just on the course. You do your long takes first, and then you punch in and get specific spots. And once you got it, you know, move on. Just kind of listen, make sure you like it, and then don't worry about it anymore. Go ahead and move on to another section and get it over with. And if you do it that way, the process should go by pretty smoothly and it should be uh, fairly simple and not take like super long. And you can be confident that you'll have material that you can work with and that you'll have a solid vocal performance that you can showcase. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Now what's great about this method is it also gives you more consistency when performing live. Because think about it, you've practiced this song singing it the best way to sing that song. And so now whenever you perform the song, you know the best way to sing it and you can sing it like that every time. So you'll have more consistent vocal performances and you might surprise yourself. Lately, me and my friend, we've been having band practice and um, we'll record our sessions and I'll listen back and 
I'll be surprised. Usually I think like, you know, my voice is going to be kind of rough and maybe just passable, but I'm like, man, I, I sound pretty good, you know? And, um, I, you know, I don't mean that in like a braggy way. I'm just saying I just have so much more vocal consistency since I've started practicing and since I've been doing these exercises addressing my weak issues. So it really helps. So if you just keep repeating this process, over time you will really improve as a vocalist. Now if you're a little worried because you're not the greatest vocalist and maybe you're still learning how to properly sing and, and use proper technique, well this will help you be able to sing to the best of your current ability. And even if that's not super amazing right now, don't worry about that. It's worth recording because what you'll have is sort of this snapshot of how good you were at that time in your life. And as you keep working and repeating this process, you'll grow and you'll be able to look back and say, man, I've really improved as a vocalist. I've really grown. I'm so much better than I was back when I did that project a couple years ago or whatever it might be. So just do the best you can right now and then see if you can top yourself on the next project. Repeat that and you'll continue to grow and you'll continue to improve. So even for myself, you know, like I'm really pleased. I'm starting to get to the point where I don't hate my vocals, but I'm, I'm hoping that I'll continue to improve and become a more solid singer. So uh, I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing and for the nice comments that you guys leave. And don't forget, I've got some links in the description so you can uh, check out the singing tutorials and, um, and the workouts and all that stuff. And uh, hopefully that'll help you out. Thank you so much. Until next time.